Welcome to SCNC 1111 Group Project Tutorials. In this video, we are going to talk about regression with GeoGebra. So in the previous tutorial, we talked about the enzyme substrate model. So this is the model that relates the substrate concentration with the rate of an enzymatic reaction. In the previous tutorial, you learned how to draw a graph with GeoGebra with k1 and k2 equals to 1. Suppose now you're given some data. Perhaps you obtained them from a lab experiment. But how do we fit this data into the model that we used in the previous tutorial? To do this, we will need to perform regression in order to find what the constants k1 and k2 are. We can perform regression on GeoGebra. This panel is known as the algebra panel. This is known as the graphics panel. We can also add additional panels by clicking on view and spreadsheet. You can manually key in what x and y are on this spreadsheet. In this example, we're given this data in an Excel file. You can just copy and paste the data on GeoGebra. To plot these data points on the graph, you have to select the data, right-click, and then choose Create List of Points. As you can see in the algebra panel, the 10 points have been created, and they are grouped under List 1. You can also see the points in the graphics panel. In order to see all the points, you can drag around using your mouse. You can also rescale the axis by holding down the Shift key and drag on the axis. OK, now you see all the 10 points displayed on the graphics panel. Performing regression is very easy in GeoGebra. All you have to do is to key in the command on the input bar. Fit. You can see the suggestions immediately. And in this example, we need to use this command. The list of points will be the list one, which includes all these 10 points you have just entered into GeoGebra. As for the function, you have to define it yourself. In this example, our function is k1, where k1 is a constant, times x over k2, where k2 is another constant, plus x. Then you can press the Enter key. Georgie Bow asks you to create sliders for k1 and k2. Never mind what they are, you just click Create Sliders. Boom, now you have the regression line. What is the equation of this regression line? To investigate this, you can just point your cursor to the line. And you can see that in the algebra panel, the function fx has been highlighted. You can drag this function from the algebra panel to the graphics panel. In the background, George Bell used least square fitting, which minimizes the error between the observed data and the model in order to find the best parameters k1 and k2. We can also calculate the R square of the regression in the input bar using the command R square list one. The function is f, so it's been calculated here. A equals zero point nine nine. You can also rename it by right clicking on the number. Again, you can also display the R square by dragging it from the algebra panel to the graphics panel. In GeoGebra, we can also choose how many significant figures 
or decimal places that we want to display. We can go to options, rounding, and select five decimal places, perhaps. Now there are controversies whether our square should be used for nonlinear regression. The discussion of this is beyond the scope of this course, but it should be noted that the R square in a nonlinear regression does not vary between 0 and 1, although many people would just interpret it the same as in linear regression. There are additional measures in regression that you can also calculate in GeoGebra. For example, you can use the command sum squared errors. To calculate the sum squared error, which is what the regression model actually tries to minimize. The easier way to rename it is just to click on the number, type on your keyboard, and drag this to the graphics panel. The sum squared error is what a regression model actually tries to minimize. Now you may also want to make your graph more beautiful. For example, I do not want to see the point labels A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So I select this point from the algebra panel. I click on them. Choose the object properties. Uncheck show label. And you can see the labels have been removed. You can also change the point style. I prefer using a cross. You can also see the sliders K1, K2 here. This is perhaps a bug in GeoGebra that the K1 that is does not equal to the K1 and K2 in the model. So you may want to hide them. To hide an object, you can right click on it. Uncheck show object. I've shown you how to display the function or a number by just dragging them over to the graphics panel. There are also other ways that you can use. Under this icon, you click a small triangle here and select text. Click on anywhere you want to add your new text. And in this example, I want to show the equation as y equals the function fx. I can just type in here y equals to include the object, you can just click on the function fx and boom, you have it on the text. However, you can see from the preview that the equations are displayed like this. How do you display them in a fraction like this? To do this, you just have to check the latex formula. Similarly, you can also add R square into this text box. In latex formula, in order to create a line break, you have to add two strokes behind the line. Then you can use latex code to type R square. Again, to show the object R square, you can just click on R square from the algebra panel. Instead of SSE, if you want to type sum squared error, you would realize from the preview that they are in the equation mode, so they're improperly displayed. So we can use the latex code text and then a big bracket. Within this text bracket, the sum squared error will be displayed correctly as text. Another way to add an object would be to click on this bar and select the object that you want to add. Okay. Again, you can drag this text anywhere you want. In order to delete these objects, you can just click on them and press delete. You have a two selected, so whenever you click on anywhere, it will generate a new text. A very easy way to go around this is to press the escape key. Or you can also select this move icon. Now you can select the text right click on it and choose delete or right click on it and press delete on the keyboard you can also drag around the text 
Finally, you may also want to export this file as a picture, which you can include in your PowerPoint slides. You can also save this file so that you can edit it later on. Thank you for watching this tutorial.